some glad morning when this life is over I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore Amen. I was just sitting there thinking, I'm about ready to take flight. Amen. It's getting close. Amen. 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 So thankful for that truth and that promise that we have that Jesus is coming back one day. Amen. And uh, it's soon. And I'm thankful that we'll fly away when he calls to meet us in the air. Amen. Good to have you in the Lord's house this morning. So thankful that you're here, a part of this service, and can't wait to see what God's going to do here this morning. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Any special prayer requests we may have this morning? Amen. Let's remember that request. Many others dealing with the with the virus and uh, having it. Uh, Miss Sherry Lovern's daughter, Miss Susan Lovern Rice, sent out a calling post about that. She was in the hospital. She had, uh, had double pneumonia. She was uh, having a big battle. You guys started praying. All of us started praying and heard great updates all weekend. She texted me this morning and said that she is doing much, much better. They every day are weaning her off the high flow oxygen, and she's doing great, a whole lot better. So just continue to pray. But she wanted me to make sure to let you guys know, Miss Sherry did. Thank you so much for praying for her. Amen. Edna White, yes, she's still not very good. Yeah, let's remember Miss Edna White, she's not doing very well dealing with the virus. Do real often, Pastor. Do, do real often. Remember that family. Any others this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. That's right. Amen. Good to hear them praise reports this morning. Amen. <coughs> Gil McManus, please remember her. She's going to have surgery to remove some cancer. Let's remember her, Kathy Burns. There's a lot of different stuff. A lot of people test positive longer than others and all, but just be much in prayer for, for that. Any others this morning? 
Amen. Pray for our country, our leaders, our president especially. Uh, pray for our nation. Amen. How many of you have been praying for rain? Amen. Amen. How many of you got a prayer answered yesterday? Amen. Well, oh, praise the Lord for the good rain that we received. We got a good shower at my house. Uh, it was more than a shower. We got a rain. Amen. And uh, needed it. When you work in farming, that is very important. And uh, I've been praying for rain. And yesterday I was out on my lawnmower and I was cutting grass and I kept seeing this cloud build and this cloud build. And I was thinking, Lord, send that rain over here. I sure would like to get rained out and cutting grass, you know. And, and uh, kept kept praying and seen that cloud going by. And so I said, well, it's done missed us. And next thing I know, the, the rain turned. It made a U-turn. It started coming our way and it got white. And I, I got wet before I got under the barn. Amen. But we've been praying. I've been praying for that. Lord showed me something yesterday as I was praying for that. He said, you know, what if we prayed, and I know we've all been praying for rain, and we've all been praying for revival too, but what if we prayed for revival like we pray for rain? Let me tell you something. We need revival in this nation. Amen. That's the only thing that's going to help our nation is revival, turning to Jesus. And really, and really revival is only spiritual rain. That's what it is. It's just spiritual rain. It, it is a thirsty uh, drink to a dry soul. And uh, we need that. Let's pray. I, I want to encourage you. When you go to the Lord in prayer, when your prayer time is, pray for revival. Brother Dan was telling me the other day about a meeting that was taking place. He had heard about at a meeting down in Roberta how revival had broken out in Roberta under a tent all during this COVID-19. Had no idea, uh, Brother Dusty posted a post about it last night, a guy, and he's got, taken that tent from Roberta. I think it's been 400 and some odd souls saved in Roberta in the past two months during all the COVID-19 virus. Thousands of people coming, sitting under the tent. Not one person has been sick. He's packing his tent up, and he's going to Washington, D.C. In September, he's going to take that tent, set it up in Washington, D.C., and he's going to have a revival. Pray for that, that evangelist. What's his... DR. I, I, I'll, I'll get that name to you. Pray, pray for him. We'll get you his name, but pray for the, the revival that he's uh, about to put on in Washington, D.C. No place on earth needs revival more than Washington, D.C. Amen? Let's pray for it. And uh, listen, the Bible says, if my people who are called by not my name will humble themselves and pray, he'll heal our land. Let's pray for that. Amen. Any others this morning before we go to the Lord in prayer? Amen. Let's remember Brother Tommy Hull and Miss Janice as well. Amen. Any others? Unspoken. unspoken. Any other unspoken requests today? Amen. Any good to be in the Lord's house this morning? Amen. Are you glad to be saved this morning? Amen. Boy, I tell you, I just want to want to bless this holy name. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Brother Tony Vance, will you lead us to the Lord in prayer? <coughs> Yes. Father, you know where our church stands in the Yes, you do, Lord. Father, pray God Feed us this morning. Yes, God. Help our Father be earnest and sincere Ooh. in our prayer life. Yes. Father, we may seek you. Yes. Father, when we go out from our places of abode, Father, help us to carry your word with us. And Father, we come in contact with people, Father, we may voice, Father. Yes, amen. Our state, Let's Father, how we feel about things going on. Pray, God, as we meet, Father, and as we assemble together, Father, that you would send what we stand in need of here in this church. Yeah, yes, Father, Lord, send Father, it, Father, use your mouthpiece. By the Holy send. Ghost, God. Father, we may feed us, Father, we may take what we hear from you and take it out, Father, and feast on ourselves. But, Father, when our cup run over, Father, we may actually have a word to say to those we come in contact with and help us live our lives, Father, to show our election of you, and, Father, our trust in you, and, Father, how you will carry us through. Pray, God, we pray 
But those that have lost loved ones, Paul, I pray God that you would talk to their hearts. Pray God for everything that's be taking place here today, Father, that you would just honor and glorify them. In your name we do pray. Amen. 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 Come on, Brother Tony, and lead us in another song. All right. We hadn't sang this in a while because I was kind of looking through. I didn't see it in our song library, but Victory in Jesus. We will sing that song. Sing all three verses. singing. we got a special this morning. Miss Cindy's got a special she'll bring for us this morning just before Kevin preaches. So I invite Miss Cindy to come up. Anybody else sing specials, whatever, keep preparing the special. We'll try to have one at least every Sunday. So. I'm so thankful for the blood of Jesus. So thankful that he was willing to shed his precious blood just for me, just for you. Lord, we, we need to claim the blood of Jesus on our lives. When Satan comes at us, throws all kinds of things at us, tears our lives up, 
we need to tell him where he needs to stop. And he needs to get right back out that door because he's not going to win. He's already lost, and he knows he has. He's just doing everything he can to tear things up for us. He's trying to hurt the Lord more than anything. But he can't. He can't. Please don't let him take control or tear up your life. Just tell him he can't cross that bloodline. Even though my spirit's low And it seems I can hardly go But still I see victory Many times I'm walking by faith Can't see what lies before me But still I see victory Sometimes our battles get hot And it seems we're fighting a lot Oh, I remember I'm standing on the rock So, Satan, if I were you I'd turn around and give up to cause I do believe you're about to lose I just gotta tell you, Satan, you can't cross the bloodline because I'm covered by his blood. You may stand and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight. Cause remember, you can't cross the stand and you may fight, but you're gonna lose this battle tonight, cause remember, you can't cross the bloodline, you must remember, you can't cross the bloodline. Glad for that bloodline. Amen. Well, God's good this morning. Amen. All the time, God is good. I'm so thankful for the spirit that we feel in this place this morning. And that's not by accident. There's people that's been praying for that. Amen. There's people that's been praying that the Lord would move. I've been praying that in my my preparation for this service uh, that the Lord would move. Not only have I been praying for that, but others. I've been praying for that as well. Uh, I know that because they've let me know, hey, I'm praying. God move in our service. God, the Holy Spirit will come. Uh, so prayers have been answered, amen. God's already moving, Brother Clyde. The Spirit is here. We give Him glory for that this morning. I tell you, I don't want to even come here unless He's here, amen. It's just another place. But when He's here, I'm telling you, 
Well, there's power in what he's going to do and what he is going to do. I want you to be aware that, uh, I didn't cover this on the announcements, but I want you to be aware that today is our mission, faith promise mission offering Sunday. So uh, when we get done with service, we go out. If you've made a faith promise to uh, give to the missions, it'll be there. The missions play to be there. You can drop that in. How many of you enjoyed Brother Ernie Emson last week? Amen. What a blessing that was. And uh, I appreciate this church so much for accepting him. And, of course, we took, on, we took, his, uh, took him on for support last week. And God's going to use that. And, God, and uh, so you, you be diligent and be faithful in your faith promise. Listen, if you didn't make a faith promise, you can still drop some money in, amen? Just, just if the Lord puts it upon your heart, do that. But I, I was going to mention this. I read, it was Monday. Pulled up my, my internet and the Google come up. And sometimes I hardly ever read the news headings on there. But that day, the Lord just let me go down and read. And there was a story about Kim Jong-un's sister. And, of course, Brother Ernie talked about moving and going into uh, North Korea and working in there and reaching those people of North Korea. And I, it just sparked my interest, and I began to read. And they said that because of the dictator's health issues, his sister had taken a, a more prominent role in the administration and uh, overseeing things. And said one thing that she was doing, that she was cracking down on people sending propaganda across their borders on balloons. And I said, praise the Lord, amen. <laughs> amen. We're part of that, amen. And uh, so there's all kind of people just moving, and uh, it's real. That was an NPR uh, news source, so uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for the work that he's doing. Thankful for the support you're giving. So you be faithful. Give to that face promise. Also, don't forget that we'll be having a, a, bridal, a shower this morning, uh, or this afternoon, for Brother Ryan and his wife. Uh, we'll be... Miss Laurie, uh, on their wedding, so that'll be 2, two o'clock to 3.30 in the fellowship hall after church. I didn't mention that earlier. I want to make sure you do that. All right. If you would this morning, if you got your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. I'm going to read a few verses of Scripture this morning while you're turning. I, I, want, to re- I want to read you a story this morning that I, I read, a funny story. I the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time and a season for everything, amen? There's a time to laugh, there's a time to, to cut up, there's a time to be serious. And I, I tell you, it's, it's a serious time, we need to be serious, but if you're serious all the time, sometimes you can forget the joy that you have in Christ. And I just want to read you this story, I thought it was really good. There was a pastor that had moved into a church and had just taken over the new pastor there, and he didn't know his members really well, so he was going to go and uh, visit them and, and kind of get to know them a little better. He visited this one house, walked up on the door, uh, walked up on the porch and uh, knocked upon the door. Nobody answered. He heard the TV on and heard things moving and, and lights were on. And so he knew someone was at home, so he knocked again. Nobody answered. He began to call out. And he says, hey, this is the... The new pastor, I just come to come by to, to visit you. Still, nobody came to the door. He knocked a little, little harder and a little louder. He, he hollered, and nobody ever came to the door. So he decided that he was going to uh, leave him a note. So he took out a card, and on the back of that card, he wrote this. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him. Revelation 3.20. Stuck it in the door and left. Next morning, went to church. That was on a Saturday. Next day, they went to church. And uh, as they were taking up their offerings, and the, the pastor was there helping with the offering, uh, getting it accounted for, found that same card that, that he had left at that house in the offering plate. And he thought that was kind of odd, so he picked up that card, and he looked at it, and below Revelation chapter 20, Verse uh, where he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. It said this. It says, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself from thee. <laughs> Genesis chapter 3, verse number 10. Amen. So uh, it's good to laugh. Amen. Uh, I hope none of you garden that way. And uh, if you do, just hide. Amen. If I ever come by. But uh, I'm thankful that we can laugh. I'm thankful we can cut up. 
it's a, we live in a tough time, amen? We live in a tough time. It's, it's good to laugh. It's good to have joy in our hearts. Listen, we as Christians should be the most joyous people right. in all the world. Not because of anything we've done or anything we have, not because of what we own, but who we have, amen? amen? Because we have Jesus Christ in our hearts. And listen, if you have him, you ought to be wanting to share him with somebody else and tell him about somebody. So I, I pray that God will help you today in this verses of Scripture. I'm going to read beginning in Genesis chapter number 6, verse number 5. I'm going to read down. I, I told Mr. Cole the verses, and I changed it up. I'm going to read a few more. I hope that doesn't mess them up back there. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Let's read beginning Genesis chapter number 6, verse 5. Said, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was on only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Listen to verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. What, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupted before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh has come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them. And behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shalt thou make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. And I'm going to skip down to verse 22. It says this, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you this day as humbly as we know how. Father, we thank you for the time that we have here this morning. Thank you for the good spirit we've already felt. Thank you for the good move of God we've already had here today. God, there's been burdens brought to this altar already here this morning. God, we pray that you've heard them. We know that you've heard them, God. We pray that you'd help told them, God, this morning. God, we pray for the request that's been made here this morning. All those that need your touch today, God, we know that you're able, you're able to do it exceedingly, abundantly above that we even ask or think. God, we give you praise for that. We thank you that we serve a mighty God this morning, Lord. But we pray here this morning that, God, that you would continue to move, that you continue to work. Lord, that you move our hearts to worship you this morning. Lord, that you would strengthen our faith. Our faith this morning. God, we pray, increase our faith this morning, God. Make it tough. And Lord, let us stand in this day that we live in, God. Lord, we just want to give you the honor. We want to, we want to be encouraged in our faith this morning, Lord, to do what you have called us to do, to be obedient to the call that you put upon our life. God, if there be one here that's lost this morning, I pray that they'd hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. God, I pray that they'd come to know you as Lord and Savior. God, I pray that they not walk out that door because we don't have too many days left. Lord, I don't know how long it's going to be till you come, but Lord, I know it's soon. God, I pray that you touch them, God, and draw them under repentance. For that one that's, Lord, walking and feels beat down and, and downtrodden, Lord, attacked by Satan, God, I pray that you just put a hedge around them, God. I pray that you'd refresh their lives, refresh their hearts. Lord, just touch us this morning through the power of the Holy Ghost. Nothing can be done in this place today except you do it, God. Lord, I submit myself. I ask you to use me, Lord, for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I want to preach on this thought this morning. Tough faith for tough times. Tough faith for tough times. Without a doubt, we are living in difficult days. Uh, we, we live in days that are probably the most difficult of any I can remember. Each day seem to, seems to bring more bad news, more disaster, and more unrest. Now, I'll be honest with you. I told Mr. Cole this week as, we was, as I was prepared, told her this yesterday, I said, I really, I'm, I'm sick and tired 
I, I don't really want to preach on these kind of things and what we're going through, but I can't get away from it. The Lord keeps leading me back to it. The Lord keeps uh, allowing me. I want to preach on something happy and something fun. But listen, we are in days where we need to get things squared away. Amen. We need to be serious. There's a time to laugh. There's also a time to get things serious. Amen. It's time for us to be serious about what's going on in the world around us. See the signs for what they are and realize Jesus is coming back and he's coming back very soon. We need to get our lives in order. Uh, listen, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to get that taken care of. And I mean now. Amen. You need to do that today. And I would say this, if the Lord moves upon your heart to be saved, you come before I get through preaching, amen. You don't have to wait till I get done giving an invitation. You can come now, for I might not get done before he comes back, amen. I'd say this this morning for those of you that may be saved and you know you're saved, but you're not walking where you need to be. It's time for us to get our lives right. It's time for us to repent. It's time for us to get not backslidden anymore and draw nigh unto God because he's coming, amen. A lot of times as we think about the days that we live in, we, we can get to the point where we realize this, or where we say this. Well, we're the only ones that's ever went through stuff like this. We, have y'all ever had a pity party? Y'all ever have a pity party for yourself? Boy, I have them. <laughs> y'all help me. Pray for me. I got a lot of them. Amen. Sometimes I, 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 I get pity parties during the week, and I think, man, nobody has to deal with this for me. And then I, then I talk to Dan. I realize he's just like me, amen. We deal with the same stuff all the time. We have the same breakdown. But listen, we're not the only ones that dealt with things like this. We're not the only ones that dealt with times like this. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter number 1, verses 9 and 10, listen to what it says. It says, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it might be said, See, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. The Bible says there's no new thing under the sun, Brother Clyde. Everything that happens has happened before. The, they say this. There's a, there's a saying that says history has a tendency to repeat itself. Amen? And listen, if we don't learn from what history has taught us, we can make the same mistakes that they made in the past. A lot of times we, we'll say this, boy, we're, we're going through an awful time. There's never been a time like this in our day. There's never been anybody had to deal with the kind of stuff that we're dealing with now, the pandemic. Well, if you do a little research, you realize there's been pandemics before, amen? Just to go back, 19, I believe it was 1918, there was the Spanish flu pandemic. Kind of the same thing that we're dealing with. Can I tell you, they got through it, amen? And listen, if the Lord don't come back now, we're going to get through this, amen? If he don't come back and call us home, we're going to get through this, Kobe. We're going we're gonna, to uh, overcome it through the power of God. They did back then. We will now if he does not come back. There's also been civil unrest. Many have said, that, boy, there's been more civil unrest lately than there's ever been. What about the time when they, when the North, when our country was fighting each other, when men and bro, when brothers were fighting against brothers, when families were torn apart because of civil war? There's been times like that before. There's been times when we went through wars. But listen, we, we've also seen that in World War II. We went through wars of those things. What we've got to realize is we've, there has been things like this that happened before. But I want you to know this. What got all those people through those things is the same thing that's going to get you and me through that. It's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to have to have our faith, not in ourselves, but faith in God Almighty. What makes our time different, I believe, than any other time is it is the total depravity of man. We do live in a time where there has been the where man, I'm talking about People in general are more depraved, more sinful right now than they have ever been. You go back about 50 or 60 years. You go back to the, to the 50s. Pretty much everybody in that day had a reverence for the things of God. They realized that this country was founded upon Christian principles. They respected that. Even the drunk would cross the street. When he was walking down the street, he would get close to where a church was. He wouldn't cross right there. He'd cross the road because he knew he was a sinner and he respected God. Hey, listen, there was a time where they respected the things of God. But now we live in a time where they do not respect God at all and want to overthrow him. They want to take away those things. It's because man has become so depraved. You say, well, that's, there's never been a time like that in, my, in the history of the world. 
except when we go back and read Genesis chapter number 6. Can I tell you, there's a time, and it tells us in Genesis chapter number 6, God looked down upon man and he said, there is so much sin upon this earth, I'm, it, 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 makes me, it pains my heart that I have made man. He said, I'm going to look and try to find me some good people, some righteous people, some people that are walking with me. And out of the whole world, Brother Edward, you can only find one. Listen, we live in a day. All of us are sinners. But we, I look around this morning, there's some folks that came this morning because they wanted to hear from God. Amen. They still love God. They still respect God. And they filled a church house this morning in the midst of a pandemic because they want to serve God. Amen. God looked down upon the earth, the whole earth, and he only found one man in, in Genesis chapter 6. So there has been a time where man has been more depraved than it is now. It was in Noah's time. Noah lived in a wicked world, a world even more wicked than ours. But this is what it says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. But as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man comes. Can I tell you, here to tell you, it's going to be just like it was in Noah when Jesus comes. It's just like it was, amen. We may not be as good prayed now as they were then, but we're getting there, and Jesus is coming. This is the question we've got to ask, though. How did Noah live for God in a world so filled with evil? How did Noah stay true to God? How did Noah walk for God in a world that was so filled with depravity? So filled with evil. Can I tell you why? This is how he did it. Noah had some tough faith. Amen. Noah was a tough faith. He had tough faith. You know what I want this morning, brother, brother Edward? I want some tough faith. Amen. I want some faith that can take a licking and keep on picking. Amen. I want to take some faith. I want to have some faith that can take a trial and still say, hey, it, it may, things may be looking like they're falling apart in my world, but I trust God. I believe what he says. I'm going to follow God no matter how bad things look on this earth. I want some tough faith. I want him to tell you we need tough faith in this day and time. We need some folks that will stand up and say, I'm going to follow God. It don't matter how bad it gets. I'm going to continue to tell people about God no matter how what they say they're going to do to me. I'm going to continue to serve God because I love him, amen, because he's been good to me. He has some tough faith. And by faith, uh, we see, and by faith and through obedience and through the promises of God, we see that Noah was able to live for God in the midst of the most wicked time in all the earth. Can I tell you that you and I and all those that love God can still live for him in the middle of this day by faith, amen. by obedience, and looking up to the promises of God this morning. That's how we're going to get through it. That's how we're going to continue to serve. That's how we're going to make a difference in this way, in this day, is through faith, tough faith, through obedience, and by the promises of God. I want to give you those three thoughts this morning really quick. Number one, let's look at the faith of Noah. This is what the Bible says. It says that God saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth. And that every imagination of his thoughts, of his heart, was on evil continually. It says he looked at man and everything that man thought was just evil. They didn't think of anything good. They didn't think of the good things. The Bible says think on these things, all things that are pure, all things that are holy, all things that are innocent, all those things. He said man did not think of those things. They thought on all things that were bad. That's the kind of the day we're living in. But he said, but Noah found grace in the eyes of God. I, want, I, I like this. Noah found grace. I heard a preacher say this one time. It was more like, it says Noah found grace, but it was more like grace found Noah. Amen. Do you, how many of you would say this, would agree with me this morning? When Jesus came looking for you, you weren't necessarily looking for him. He just came find you. His grace, his love came pouring out on you, Brother Clyde. Hey, we weren't really looking for him but he was looking for us. I'm glad today he was looking for me. I'm glad today he found me, amen. Hey, listen, if you're lost this morning, I want you to know he's looking for you this morning. He's trying to find you this morning. I heard a little story about a, about a little boy. A, a salesman had called that little boy's house, and he answered, and he picked up, and he said this. He said, hello. And he said, uh, son, I, I'm calling to speak to your mother. He said, she can't talk right now. He said, well, is your dad home? He said, no, he's talking with my mom. <coughs> he said, well, I, I really need to speak to one of them. He said, 
They're talking to the police. He said, why are they talking to the police, son? And at the same time, he could hear helicopters uh, uh, circling on the phone. And he said, I hear helicopters. What's going on? The little boy kind of laughed and kind of giggled in a little, little voice. He said, they're looking for me. Amen. <laughs> They was all of them looking for him. He was hiding. Hey, listen, there's some folks that's hiding from Jesus this morning, but I'm here to tell you, he's looking for you. And I'm here to tell you, when it's your time, he can find you this morning. It may be today's the day that Jesus wants to lay his love upon you and find you. Hey, listen, grace found Noah. I like that. I, I love that Noah has so much grace. It said Noah walked with God. You know, I look. There's only two people in the whole Bible that it says walked with God. There's only two. Noah's one of them. Enoch is the other one. Why do you think Noah walked with God? Did you realize this? If you'll go look back in Genesis chapter five and look at that genealogy, you'll figure out that Noah's part of Enoch's genealogy. That means they were on the same uh, family line. Amen. They descended from one another. Enoch walked with God, and because Enoch walked with God, he passed down some things. And because Enoch walked with God, Noah walked with God. Can I tell you something? What you do and how you live your life, you're going to pass a lot of it down to your, your, your sons and your daughters, those that you love. Boy, I tell you, what we need is a family, a, a, a man that will stand and be the head of the family and bring his family to church and pass that down to his children. Listen, we think Jesus is coming back just any time, but we don't know. No man knows the day or the hour. It may be that it's 20 years before he comes back. It may be that there's a great revival that sweeps this land, that sweeps this world, and God says, I'm going to give you a little bit more time. He's done that before, amen. He's done that with Hezekiah, I believe it was. He asked for more time, and he gave us more time. It may be that revival sweeps across this land, and he gives us more time. If that's the case, we need to be raising our families in the ways of God. We need to be passing that down. But Noah walked with God. I like that because Enoch walked with God. I like what it says about Enoch. It said, Enoch walked with God, and then he was not. Do you know what this is a picture of? We're about to see a picture of Noah and Enoch. Noah is a picture of Israel. He walked with God. He went through the trials and the wrath of God on the ark safely, made it through those tribulations and the, and the wrath of God. He's a picture of Israel because I'm here to tell you, Israel is still God's people. And when Jesus comes back, there's going to be a great tribulation upon this earth, and this earth is going to be wiped clean, but there's going to be a remnant of Israel that will make it through to the other side. Amen. The Israel is the ones that will make it through to the other side. They'll go through the tribulation. God's going to hide them away. God's going to hide them in that rock over there at Petra. And they're going to go through that tribulation and they're going to enter into the millennial reign. That is a picture of Israel. Moses is a picture of Israel. But do you know who Enoch is a picture of? The Bible says Enoch walked with God and then he was not. He was translated to heaven. Enoch is a picture of the church. Amen. He is a picture of you and I that know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. One day we're going to be walking in this world and that trumpet's going to sound... And then we're going to be not. Amen. We're just going to be with him. We're going to go home with Jesus. That's a picture of what's going to happen. You know how that happens to you this morning? By your faith. For you're saved by grace through faith. Grace found you. Faith saved you through the blood of Jesus Christ. He, he walked with God. Even in the midst of all the evilness, he walked with God. Listen, I want you to know this. If Noah walked with God in his generation, you and I can walk with God in ours. Gives us encouragement. Even though it looks bleak, we can still walk with God, Brother Clyde. We can do it faithfully. I like what it says in Hebrews chapter number 7. Uh, excuse me, Hebrews chapter number 11, verse 7. The Bible says this, For by faith Noah, being warned of a God of things not seen yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark. It was by faith that he was saved through those things. Had a good question this morning. Somebody came and asked me a question about those that died before Jesus came. They said this, what happened to them? I love questions like that. That is awesome. You know what that tells me? That tells me that they are working. They are have a yearning to know knowledge of God's word. Let me tell you what happened to those that died in faith. Same thing that's going to happen to those that died in faith. 
See, we're looking back to the cross. Amen? We, we're looking back at what Jesus has already done. Jesus has already came. Jesus has already died. Jesus has already been resurrected. And we look back at what he has done. And that's how we're saved by grace through faith in what Jesus has done on that cross. But those that, that came before Jesus, they had faith in what Jesus would do. Amen? They look forward unto the cross. We look back to it, Brother Clyde, but they look forward. There was a, a, in Genesis chapter 15, it was a prophecy that said that I'm going to send a Savior into the world. Hey, listen, he's going to crush the head of Satan. When she sung about that bloodline, I couldn't think, I couldn't help but think when Jesus died on that cross, you know what he did? He stuck the devil's head and just crushed his head, amen, just like the prophecy said he was. They believed that prophecy, that there was coming a Messiah. He was going to save the world from their sins, and they believed that. And because they believed that and believed that in faith, they died in faith looking unto the cross. And they had the same thing that you and I have. Now they went to a different place at that time called Abraham's bosom. That's a whole nother, I don't want to run a rabbit right there, but I'm here to tell you they went there when Jesus died and he resurrected. He went and got them. He took them to heaven. They're there right now waiting on you and me. Amen. He's there. By faith, they're there. But listen, it says this in verse number 6, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. Without faith, I, 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 read a, I had a conversation with a young man, young preacher this, this uh, summer, and he said this, he said, I got a friend, and I've really been witnessing to him, but he's kind of atheistic, he don't believe in God, and he said, everything I've tried to tell him, he just kind of throws off, and he said, he just won't believe. Hey, but he said, he told me this, he said, if you can prove to me your God exists, then I'll believe. And he said, I just don't know what to tell him. I said, tell him there ain't no way you can prove it. Because God don't work on proof. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. Everything God does, he does by faith. We have to trust in faith. Listen, I can't no more prove to you that there is a God than you can prove anything in this world. But I believe it truly by faith. I can show you evidence of what God has done and say, hey, this is God. There ain't nothing else. But there's no actual substantial proof but my faith is enough proof for me I believe I've seen enough evidence of what God has done I believe it and the Bible says those that without faith it's impossible to lead God for he that cometh to God must believe that he is that he is this he must believe he must have faith uh, he Noah experienced that faith do you realize this Noah came upon before they was in he came even before Abraham and all the he lived in a place where they didn't have no light much. All they had was a revelation of God's presence. And he believed in God and he walked with him. That's tough faith, amen. Even in the midst of all that he lived in, his faith was passed down. <clears throat> if you look at the first verses of Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about Abel. It says, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Abel walked by faith, amen. He walked by faith as well. He had it passed down, and Abel came and made an offering unto God. Abel worshiped God. Then it talks about Enoch. And it says, Enoch walked with God and was translated that he should not see death. Enoch walked with God by faith. Amen? Abel worshiped God by faith. Enoch walked with God by faith. But now we're going to see Noah. It says, Noah, being moved by faith, worked for God. Prepared an ark for the saving of his house. He worked for God. Do you know this, that you and I need to have that same pattern? If we're going to walk with God, and we're going to work with God, before we do either one of them, we've got to worship God. Amen? We have got to worship. You know what's wrong with us in this day and time? We don't worship. Amen? We come and we sit, we listen to the preacher, but we need to worship. We need to worship in our own time. We need to worship when we're together. If we worship, then we'll walk. And when we walk, then we can work. Amen. The Bible says in James uh, chapter number 2, it says this, by, uh, by faith, uh, you're saved by faith, but show me my faith and I'll show you my works. He says, listen, faith, real faith, true saving faith will have works. Amen. It'll show there will be something that shows with Noah did those things. He saw those things. Listen, faith is... And i got to hurry. I'm not, never going to get done. Faith is this. Faith is just simply taking God at his word. 
Would you agree with me? That's, that's a simple definition. That's the Blackjack Mountain definition of faith. Amen. For all of us can understand that, faith is just taking God at his word. Noah did that. Noah took God at his word. This is what Noah said. This is what God said to Noah. Noah, I've seen how wicked the whole world is. I'm about to wipe them out. I need you to build an ark for the saving of your, your family, for you to save you. And I want you to preach. If anybody else will accept it, they can get on that boat too. He said, but I want you to prepare, prepare an ark because I'm about to wipe this thing clean. And you know what Noah did? He believed and he done. Do you believe the Bible this morning? Faith is taking God at his word. This is God holy inspired word. Let me tell you what he told, told Noah. He said, Noah, I'm about to wipe this water, I'm about to wipe this world clean with water. But he said after that, he gave him a sign. Y'all remember that rainbow? He said, I'll never do it that way again. But he didn't never say he'd never clean this world off again. He just said, I'll never do it with water. That's why when you see that rainbow, people say, oh, this co the covenant of God, it's just a covenant. He's not going to flood it again. Let me tell you what the Bible says in 2 Peter. The Bible says that there is judgment coming again. If you believe God, as Noah believed God, that judgment will come, and I want you to hear the word of God this morning. It says this, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. I'm here to tell you this morning, if you believe God and you believe that word, there is judgment coming to this world. It's not coming in water this time. It's coming in fire. He's going to wash it off. He's going to clean it off with fire. He's going to burn off. You know how you make a field? You know what you do to a field when it gets where it's not productive? You burn it off. That's what God's going to do this world. Listen, if you're saved, we're going to be gone before it burns. Amen? He's coming to get us. If you're saved, he's coming to get us. But if you're lost, you'll be here for that. You'll be a part of that judgment. You'll be just like those people that walked, uh, that, that, flood, that drowned in the flood. You'll have to deal with that. So you need to get saved. But let, let me tell you this. If you're lost, I want to hear this. If you're, on, if you're listening online, I want you to hear this. Let me also tell you what the Bible says. The Bible explicitly says this. There is judgment coming. Judgment by fire. But the Bible says this also in Ephesians chapter 2. But God, who is rich in mercy, Amen. with his great love wherewith he loved us, has quickened us together with Christ. Amen. I'm here to tell you this morning, the Bible also says, that the Bible says there is judgment coming, but the Bible says that God loves sinners. Amen. And he sent his only begotten son to save all those sinners that are lost. I'm here to tell you, the Bible says this this morning, if you'll believe it by faith, Jesus came to die for you, and he rose the third day, and he seated at the right hand of the Father this morning for you. If you'll believe that, you can be saved. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The Bible says you can be saved by faith this morning, just like Noah was. Do you believe in this morning? Do you believe the Bible? I want you to look, number two, at Noah's obedience. Not only did Noah have faith in God, but Noah obeyed God. Verse 22, or excuse me, verse 40, 14 of Genesis chapter 6 says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood, rooms and shalt thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without. Verse 22, skip down, it says, Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him. So did he. Obedience, faith. Faith always is followed by obedience. The Bible says that Noah was obedient to do all that God said. The Bible says in Hebrew, he was moved by fear and built the boat. He had, that fear is a holy reverence, and he obeyed God's command. Listen, th th this ain't Bible. This is just what I found. G God told Noah, said, I want you to build that boat. Noah said, yes, sir. And because of his obedience, he went out and started cutting the wood right then. They didn't have sawmills. They, they couldn't call down to Rogers and Son down here and get them to deliver up all, saw, all the, the lumber that he needed. He had to go down and cut it. They go mill it. He had to put it all together. I believe he went out right away and started making that boat, just like God had said. He obeyed God. He began to work. And he worked for 120 years building that boat. You can't find this in the Bible, Brother Edward. But I believe the very first thing he built was the door. I believe Noah built the door to go in that boat. I think that's the first thing he constructed. 
That's just, this is just my theology. Now, you don't take me to the bank. You don't say, well, Brother Kevin said, this is Bible. This ain't Bible. This is what I think. But I believe he made that door. It's the first thing he built. And can you imagine when somebody starts building something like that, somebody starts cutting down forest all around the place, and, they, and he's stacking up lumber everywhere, and people start coming around and saying, Noah, what in the world are you cutting all these trees down for? He said, because God told me to build a boat. Yeah. You know what them people would say? What's a boat? We ain't never had to have a boat. What is a boat? He said, well, it's this big old thing that's going to float when it floods. They say, what's a flood? He said, well, it happens when it rains. What's rain? You realize in that day and time, it had never rained before. God just watered the earth with a mist that came up from the ground, then it go back down. It never rained from the ceiling before. But God said, listen, Noah said, God told me that it's gonna, he's going to send a flood, and if y'all don't get right with God, if you don't get in that door right there for this boat, if you don't enter in that door, you won't enter it at all. He said, listen, I'm prepared. You need to get ready to. You know what they walked off thinking? Man, this guy has lost his marbles. He has lost everything. But you know what? When any time you begin to do a work for God, it always opens up an opportunity for you to witness for God. I, could, I, I bet people came from miles and miles around to see this man that was building this so-called boat that they never heard about for this so-called flood that they didn't know anything about. And I believe he built the door. Very, the first thing he done was built the door. And he said, listen, there's a flood coming. But if you walk through that door right there, you can escape it. When the flood begins to come, if you walk through that door, you can escape it. If you'll follow God by faith, believe what he said and walk through that door, you can escape it. I said all that to say this, that Jesus said in John chapter number 10, I am the door. Amen. Listen, we're still here today to do this. He's the door. If you'll walk through it, you can escape the judgment that is coming. And if you walk through that door and walk with him closely and walk with God, he'll encourage you every step of the way. Don't you think after 120 years that got old working on that boat? Could you imagine? Listen, he didn't let the world distract him. Could you imagine all the ridicule that he went through? I mean, they come up there and talk about that. That fool is an idiot. He's working for hundreds of years building this boat that we don't even, that we don't even need. He's an idiot. He took all that ridicule, but listen. You better believe if you're going to walk with God, there's going to be distractions to your walk. People are going to talk about you. The, the devil's going to try to get after you. He's going to try to make you want to quit. But this is what Noah said. He said, I'm just going to keep walking with God. I'm going to keep obeying what God said. He said, build the boat, build the boat, build the boat. Not only did he build the boat, but in 2 Peter chapter number 3, verse 20, it said he was also a preacher of righteousness. He preached to them every, as he was building. He'd come by and they'd ridicule him and he'd say, you know what? You'll come through this door right here. You can be saved. That's exactly what I'm doing today. There's people, that's exactly what you do in your daily life. You preach the gospel, tell people about Jesus Christ. Let me ask you this. The only thing, you know what Jesus told you and I to do, and I'm going to be done after this. He says, go ye therefore and tell all creatures. Preach to all creatures. Tell them about me. Are we doing our job? Are we like Noah? Are we being obedient? Are we telling others about Jesus Christ? I, I, I'll be the first one to tell you, I'm doing a whole lot better job than I'm doing right now. I need to do better. God has showed me that through this. But I need to do a better job. I can do it well in this, in this pulpit, but this pulpit ain't the only place we're supposed to tell people about Jesus. It's all over. We're supposed to go and tell people about Jesus. Are we being obedient? Are you being obedient? If you're not, you can get right. You can start being obedient. Do you realize you can start walking with God anytime you decide to? Even if you, you've come and been saved and you've got backslidden, you can always go back home. Amen. You can always get back close if you'll just repent and turn to Him. So we see Noah's obedience. He preached for 120 years. He never got distracted by the people, but he always looked to God's promises. This was God's promise. <coughs> he said, Noah, one day when the... When the you get done with that boat, I'm going to call your family in. And all those that will believe, I believe this. I believe if there would have been a people that come and said, I believe what you said, Noah, I'm going to follow the Lord, he would have let them get in the boat. But not one person, not one person accepted that. You know, in today's time, what we call Noah? A failure. Preached 120 years and did not get one come. But he wasn't a failure because he had faith and he believed in God. He obeyed God. 
and he had the faith in the promise. This is what God said. God, God said, Noah, I'm going to call you into the boat. When Noah got done, nailed that last nail, put on the last board, pitched the last pitch. He said, all right, Noah, get your wife, get your sons, get their daughters, bring them in this boat. I'm going to shut the door. And can I tell you something? When, he, when they got in, he promised he'd shut the door, and he shut the door. And all those folks that didn't get in, it was too late then. I'm, I'm here to tell you there's a promise that he has left for you and, it, you and I that he's coming back to get us one day. Listen, every time you think about the rapture, every time you think about the, that old trumpet sounding, it ought to make you get all happy inside. Amen. Amen. You ought to just think, man, I can't wait till that trumpet sounds. I can't wait because I got a promise that I'm going home with Jesus. But lost person, I want you to hear this this morning. When that trumpet sounds, it'll be just like when the door's shut. It'll be too late then. You need to do business with God right now while there's still time. Listen, today is a day of salvation. To you that know Jesus Christ, it may be that you've not been obedient. It may be that you've gotten away and you're not walking where you need to be. You're not walking with God like you once did. You can. All you got to do is come and ask God to revive your heart, and he will do it this morning. I don't know what the Lord's put up on your heart this morning, but I want you to be obedient to him. If the Lord's spoken of you and you need to be saved, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You may need to be saved. You may be, need to be revived. Whatever the Lord has asked you to do, I want you to obey him this morning. Brother Tony, you come on. Brother Clyde, you come. Would you have faith? Do you got faith like Noah had? Are you being obedient like Noah was obedient? If you're not, you can get all those things right this morning for his honor and his glory. Let's stand our feet. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to give a verse of invitation. If the Lord spoke to your heart this morning, I want you to come. Let us pray. Lord, we ask you to come this morning, God, and just work on hearts this morning. Lord, have your will and way. Lord, speak to hearts. If there's burdens that need to be laid down, Lord, we pray that you lay them down this morning. Lord, I pray you allow these people to lay them down. God, I pray that there's one that's lost this morning. They come to through the free part of sin, through the faith in Jesus Christ. Lord, put your grace upon them this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hopefully the Lord morning. He's speaking to you. Come. Jesus is tender. They call Thank you.